Hi everyone. I believe that many people in this room today are interested in complex optimization models for power systems and in complex planning problems. We have increasing level of modeling complexity every year. We now have huge optimization models with millions of parameters and variables. We have non-linearity, non-convexity, and we also have machine learning models and various combinations of learning-based approaches and traditional optimization approaches. However, behind this complexity, it is sometimes difficult to understand the real value of our solutions, the real value of resources we are trying to optimize. This work is an attempt to interpret the value of flexibility in the context of transmission expansion planning problem. In the next 15 minutes, I will show you an idea how we can get additional information about our solution, how we can get more insights about our planning problem. And the main takeaway from this talk is a simple message that it is not enough to solve a complex problem once. Actually, a single uh, optimal solution gives us very limited information about the structure of our problem. So we need to solve planning problems multiple times, but we have to do it in a clever way. So before jumping into the simulations, I think it's uh, beneficial to talk about uh, the context of the problem. What do we mean about uh, flexibility? We mean new emerging resources in power systems that have the technical ability to exchange the power with the grid such as battery energy storage systems, various demand response programs, TSO, DSO coordination, and so on. And we are considering planning of such resources uh, for transmission systems. And so, so we are looking into the future. We have some demand growth forecast, and we need to know how to upgrade our system, what new lines, what new resources to build. But we are considering not a simple planning problem, but a security constraint problem. With security constraint, we mean that we include N minus one security criterion. This, criteri this criterion means that we are considering various contingencies, uh, what, uh, one at a time. So we are looking at what happens if one element of the system fails. And finally, we want to interpret the value of flexibility in this problem. And here we were inspired actually by machine learning studies and game theoretic works, where researchers work with huge learning models, and then they want to interpret the impact of you know, features, input data on the output decisions. And yeah, you will see how we did it in the context of transmission expansion planning. So let's start with a simple illustrative case study, a five bus system. You can see here five generators uh, and two demands located at buses one and two. And we're looking into the future. We want to plan this system to upgrade it to meet the growing demand. And what are our uh, investment options. In this case, showed by dashed lines, we can increase the capacity of six lines, and we can also invest in two flexibility providers uh, located close to the demands. This problem is well known in academia and industry, but I want to mention that this particular picture, we can call it a normal operation state, because all elements of the system will be working. All lines that we are going to build, they are not failing. However, what happens if, let's say, line one, two fails? We need to assess the impact of this contingency. Will there be any load curtailment, any problems? And we need to know that our system will withstand this contingency. There is another case that maybe line one, three fails. We also need to solve this sub-problem. And I think you know where this is going. In this case, in total, we have six contingencies if we want to analyze what happens with the line failures. And this is why security constraint planning is such a complex problem because not only we have to formulate the sub-problems, we have to solve them all simultaneously uh, together in one optimization problem. The equations. They take the whole page of my manuscript. I barely met the PCC page limit, so I don't want to waste your time discussing each symbol here. Instead, just a few important things. As you can see in uh, green, we are formulating variables and constraints for each scenario and each state of the system where a state corresponds to the normal state plus contingency states. And one very important variable that I highlighted here, LC, is load curtailment. We introduce this variable to avoid infeasible solutions. Instead, if a contingency has some major impact, we simply can solve the problem and write down the value of load curtailment, and then this will help us to analyze how severe this contingency is. 
So coming back to this simple five bus system, here you may see the optimal solution. The optimal investment decisions are shown in green color. And you may see that uh, our solver converged and it says you should build these three lines and invest in both flexibility providers. And if we believe to the solver that this solution is optimal, we might be happy. But actually we argue in this work that it is not enough to solve uh, the planning problem once because a few critical questions remain unexplored. For example, we see that we need to build three lines, but how to prioritize them? I mean, which of these lines is the most important one? We cannot build three uh, transmission lines overnight. Uh, this will be a huge planning project with some stages, and we need to know with which line, with which investments to start. If we want to know this, we might need to estimate contributions of our investment options to some objectives. Let's say avoided load curtailment or uh, total system cost reduction. Then uh, we have investments in different technologies like traditional line reinforcement or flexibility providers. Which investments are better for this case? We don't know. Again, the single optimal solution doesn't tell us uh, about this. And finally, interesting question is, do we have any investments with synergies? Uh, by synergies, I mean that such investment options are bringing benefits not only on their own, but also in combination with other options. And if we can identify such investments, we should probably prioritize them. Now, if we want to solve uh, this problem, if we want to comprehensively estimate the value of our resources, we need to solve a combinatorial problem with two to the power of n number of um, combinations of investments. As I told you, we were inspired by game theoretic studies and in game theory, such combinations are called coalitions. So we are studying coalitions of investments and we, call, we can call them players. Then if we formulate this problem like this, we can analyze contributions of investment options to our objectives. And mathematically, what we do in the paper, we are calculating this MC, marginal contribution, to coalition S by player I. And it's a very simple formula. This is just a difference between coalition with player I minus coalition without player I. And if we do this for all possible coalitions for all investment options, we can understand the value of these uh, investments. The only problem that for this, even for this simple case, we have to solve uh, our planning problem two to, two to the power of eight number of times, and it's quite computationally challenging. But for the sake of illustrating this concept, we did it, and here are the results. So you can see the results on the right. They might seem complex, so let me explain what is going on here. On the horizontal axis, we see our investment options. We can call them players. You may see lines and two flexibility providers. And on the vertical axis, we see contribution to avoided load curtailment. So the logic here is very simple. If we have higher values, uh, this investment option is bringing more contributions. It's reducing potential load curtailment. And this is good for our problem. So what else do we have here? We are plotting each of these 256 solutions as uh, black points. And since some points are overlapping, we are also using so-called violin plot, this gray area. Uh, this plot works like this. When the area is narrow, there, there are no data points, no solutions. When it's wide, uh, this is a dense area of solutions. And now when I have explained this to you, uh, we realize that in this particular case, investment in line 1-4 is the best option. It brings the most contributions to avoided load curtailment. And if speaking to system planner, we can explain why we should prioritize this line. You may have a question, why do we need all of these uh, complex simulations? Why do we have to solve these two to the power of n uh, number of coalitions of investments? Why can't we just you know, solve the model two times? First with all investments and then just exclude one line. And in the paper, we explain why this naive approach will not work. So in this figure, I did this for you. Uh, you can see the range between um, red markers. It is the range between these simple solutions with line, without line, and if we compare these results, it may seem that investment in flexibility at bus one is better because it brings higher contributions. And uh, investments in line one four are not that great. But then, as you can see, if we estimate all possible combinations of all possible synergies of investments, we will realize that line one four is actually better and it's, uh, let's say, weighted average sum of contributions is higher. So I can say here that this option has the highest synergistic capability. We then repeated the simulations for another objective function, um, 
cost reduction, so minimizing the, the total cost of the system. We've got similar results for this case, shown in blue color. Again, line 1-4 is better than investments in flexibility in this case. Finally, to test the scalability of our tool, we applied it to a simplified UK transmission system with 30 buses. You can see the system visualized as a graph where the size of the nodes uh, correspond to the load located there. So we can see that south of the UK has more load than north. And then we made some pre-screening of investment options. We selected the best investments and solved this coalitional analysis. And the results look like this. In this case, you may see that investment in flexibility at bus 25 in the south is the absolutely best option to prioritize. And I think it is interesting to see how we can interpret this very complex problem and how we can get more insights about our investment options. Interestingly, for the UK case, once we changed our objective function when we analyzed cost savings, it turns out that one line in the north is more um, beneficial. It brings more benefits. So here is an interesting insight that depending on the objectives of the system operator, um, investments in flexibility or lines can bring completely different values, sometimes reducing curtailment or sometimes reducing costs. So here I'm coming to the conclusions. Uh, in this work, we demonstrated the need for interpretable models for N-1 secure transmission expansion planning. On the right, I put a framework diagram that we used in the paper. You can see that we formulate this uh, complex nonlinear optimization model. And then in this middle part, basically we have just a few loops where we say that for coalition, we solve our model, we estimate contributions. And after that, we perform all of this analysis and we prioritize investment options. The only problem is that doing this is computationally challenging, but there exist some approaches in the literature and we will explore them in the future research. And the final insight that I already shared with you is that the results that I showed you today are very case specific. In some cases, it might turn out that flexibility is better. In other cases, li transmission lines are better because they're enabling transferring of cheaper power. So it's an interesting framework, but it's hard to get some general conclusions. They're very case specific. Let me mention that we published the code uh, for this tool uh, programmed in Julia on GitHub. We call this tool ISTP, Interpretable Security Constraint Transmission Expansion Planning. And I want to say many thanks to my co-authors from the University of Manchester and from Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. Thank you.